Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. Uh, we're going to keep this pretty short. Uh, it's, uh, I, I think, you know, about 40, 30, 40 minutes, uh, unless questions go on forever. I'd like to introduce the stage party, if you don't know them, uh, our provost, Michael Bowers, our senior VP for finance and, ad, and administration business, Jerry Bomati, I don't even know his title. Yeah, well, that, yeah, or the Prince of Darkness. And um, <coughs> Cecilia Maldonado, our incoming faculty senate chair, Jessica Lucero, outgoing head of GPSA, Adam Cronus, nearly a legend, outgoing undergraduate <laughs> uh, CSUN representative and someone who, uh, uh, Jessica and Adam, who've been really with us through thick and thin. And uh, I, I just wanna say, uh, we'll miss you, we'll miss you. And I've heard that we have new elections and I know that the new folks are gonna be just terrific. Uh, but all the same, we've been through some, some things together and uh, I appreciate all your support. <clears throat> Oh, we're here for a really simple reason today. We're here to talk a little bit about our decanal accreditation visit. Um, now, the last decanal accreditation visit was in the year 2000, oddly enough, it being 2010. And I believe at that time, President Emerita Carol Herter was at the helm. And uh, we were able to clear the skids on that, and even though there were some comments about how fast we were growing in our capacity, and of course, the eternal comments about learning outcomes, uh, a, a great job was done, and people had their eyes forward looking to the future. I think you all know what's happened in the last 10 years here. Uh, but this year, we've been so focused on budget cuts, and some of the tough situations that we're in that I thought it might be a good time to say accreditation, while an onerous task, is in fact an opportunity for us to reflect on why we're here. And I'm pretty sure most of us are here because we really believe in what higher education does to transform a region. We believe in helping students. We believe in producing wonderful scholarship that makes the world a better place. We believe that the practical research that we do can add to economic diversification in this region. And it might be nice if we took a breath and we stopped thinking for a moment about the budgets. And instead we remembered the prime reason we're here. Now again, I've, I've said to a group earlier today, perhaps I'm really talking to myself because I know how wrapped up I get in the current situation that we're in. And I know there's been opportunity costs. When you spend a lot of time cutting budgets, you're not thinking about gen ed reform. You're not thinking about the new learning outcomes. You might not be building that critical research component. But I would submit to all of you that the opportunity that we have in front of us is a better reason for us to celebrate than it is to bemoan our fate. And let's talk a little bit about the transition from the year 2000 to the year 2010. In that time, our faculty population has grown significantly, um, probably about 12, 13% uh, overall, not a bad number, would have been higher a year ago, we can all admit to that. During that time, the student population has grown from 16,000 FTE to 20,000 FTE. During the last 10 years, our research output has increased by something like 250%, something to be incredibly proud of. In fact, when the National Science Foundation ranked departments and units that had most increased their productivity in the past five years, our science and engineering programs rank fourth in most improved in the country. Here's another tidbit. I think most of you know that economic development in a region is very closely correlated to the number of degrees that are found in the citizenry. I'm going to give you a simple example. In the Denver metro area, a very successful area, an area that, has been, that is already coming out the other end of the recession, 
40% of the population has bachelor's or higher degrees. In Las Vegas, that number is about 20%. Now, none of us are surprised by that number because our population growth has been fueled by immigration, and many of our immigrants have been folks who haven't gone to college. However, if you look at the statistics for increases by percent in advanced degrees produced, Nevada, strangely enough, leads the country. And this region leads Nevada. We have done our job. We have gone to the top Carnegie rankings. We have produced more research. We are graduating more students. And let's just look over the last year. Are you ready for this? When I was at University of Hawaii, our great struggle was that we had a terrible student information system and we were going to change it with another product. That was a five-year effort. And the first time they flipped the switch to go live for registration, it crashed for three days. And you can imagine how the students felt about that. It took a long time to fix. How many of you realize that last week, our Integrate project went live for registration? They were ahead of schedule and under budget, and did it crash? I haven't heard one complaint, and don't say not yet, Juanita. <coughs> okay. I would say that this is truly evidence that there are miracles. Um, what an incredible accomplishment. Uh, putting in a, a student information system will bring a university to its knees. The reason we've been successful is because of you in this room. We have worked together as a community. We've worked hard. You have all picked up extra work over the past few years. And yet your desire to get it done, to roll up your shirt sleeves and get the job done, has really made an impact on this university and on this community. And I will tell you, the community loves us back. There is ample evidence of it. Here's a simple testament to it. In the past few years, as many of you know, we completed a capital campaign. It was just done this fall one that started under Carol, went with David, and finally ended uh, with me at the helm. That capital campaign brought in $500 million. That's a big number for a young upstart university. And we should all be incredibly proud. But here's a staggering statistic. Now, and, and I'm gonna reference Bill, because if I'm wrong, then I'll blame him. Um, Bill tells me, that if we get all of our ducks in a row from July to July, we could be as high as $100 million of funds raised this year. I think we're already at about $70 million of funds raised this year. Now, I would submit to you that if you want to know if your community loves you, there is a litmus test. People have generously opened up their wallets. They've gotten behind us. They've supported us. What else have you done this past year? When our legislators were considering cuts to higher education, a very typical drill in our state is that K-12 doesn't get cut much and that higher ed gets cut more because we're the budget balancer. It happened in our last biennium. In fact, it happened at a shocking level. This time we held a special session and they heard from you and they heard from our students, and they heard from those in the community who cared deeply about this university. And at least we held our own with K-12. Now, I won't tell you that the result was wonderful. It wasn't wonderful. It's painful. But I think they've heard your voice. And so what I will tell you is, I believe as a community, we've learned how to circle the wagons and shoot out. And that's a really signal change for us, for this community, and it helps this university to move forward despite tough times. Now, what happens during an accreditation visit? I will talk very briefly about this and then I'm gonna turn the microphone over to Michael Bowers and those who are actually helping us to lead the visit. Um, if you take a look at the website 
which, uh, Gail, are you here? Raise your hand if you're here. Gail, stand up. Normally, Gail would have had 500 handouts to get you to the website, uh, but, but they, she's passed them out already, and uh, I guess, I don't know, budget cuts. Anyhow, our website uh, gives you access to the full self-study report. I want to say to Mohammed Trabia, stand up and wave to the crowd, and to the many others who helped on the accreditation team and for the standards. You did a phenomenal job. Your report is a superior report. It's better than products I've seen almost anywhere else. Um, I'm sure it will get us off to a very good start with our accreditors. Um, we will be having this visit starting Monday morning, right after a special board meeting. The timing couldn't be more wonderful. But despite that, I'm confident. I'm confident in the university. I'm confident in our tenacity and determination. And I'm confident that when we all sit down with the accreditors in front of us, no matter what role you might play in an open meeting or in a specific meeting talking about a certain standard, that we'll have a lot to celebrate in 10 years of progress. And I want you to know that I appreciate what you've done and the preparation that you've put into this visit, whether it was direct or indirect by your actions and what you do every day, and that I think we're gonna come out okay. Now, here's a couple cautionary tales, and, and they're kind of fun. Um, when I was at University of Hawaii, the chancellor, who's the president equivalent here, uh, and the president, who's like the chancellor, uh, were both on the ropes. I got there just in time for two beheadings, and it was a pretty rough time. During that time, uh, our accreditation team came, and as you could guess, the mood on campus was a little dour. But here's where you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. Our president, in his infinite wisdom, decided that the accreditors should have the cheapest box lunches, and in the enter entrance meeting with the accreditors, thought, it was unimportant to go, and so we ditched the meeting. Can you guess what kind of a report we got? It, it was horrible, and I spent three years trying to fix it uh, and get us back in good graces. So I'm going to give you accreditation 101 tips. Here they are, and of course, everybody's gonna do whatever they want, and that's campuses, and we love ca our campuses because of it. But I guess I encourage you to be nice to them, Pretty simple. After all, we're a school that's known for hospitality. These are smart, smart people. They have done this before. They've seen what universities have, and they recognize all the maladies of universities as well as many of the good things that universities do. In your conversations, you may learn something. I think there could be a very productive dialogue, and I hope you engage them in it. If you have things to tell them, tell them straight up. I'm not sure whining ever really works a lot. And I'm going to encourage you, as we've said before, not to use the accreditation stick. We need four more faculty in our department. Well, trust me, they've heard that about a thousand times over. I think what we should be concentrating on are the things that we can do, the things we should be doing, uh, how you've contributed, and where we're heading. I know that they'll be deeply concerned with the educational programs, they will always, always, always be concerned with assessment. And here's some kind of good news. Two years ago, they came to visit, and thanks to B and others uh, and Michael Bauer's shop, uh, they said that we were probably leading the Northwest in terms of our ability to do cogent assessment and have it be useful uh, as a university community. So wow, that means a lot of you did some phenomenal work. Um, I will also say, that they'll ask tons of questions and they'll get the mood of the campus very quickly. Uh, and the mood of the campus is the mood of the campus. Uh, however that works out, I'm sure they'll take it into account. I actually called the head of the accreditation team, someone who's done many of these visits. Also the same person who did UNRs. And it is, isn't it interesting that his name is Reno? He, uh, uh, Reno didn't fare very well in their accreditation. Um, they weren't happy with the result. They wrote a fairly hostile note.
to the accreditors and how do you suppose that worked? Didn't really work. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful if in the midst of one of the toughest economic times in Nevada history, and certainly in UNLV history, we were able to run a phenomenal accreditation visit. Wouldn't it be a wonderful way to celebrate all the good things this university has done and contributed? And wouldn't it be great to have commendations come out of this? Now, I'm not a complete Pollyanna. I know you always get dinged in accreditation. It's inevitable. But I will say to you, I believe that we're good enough and that we've done a fantastic job of preparation. And I hope that comes through to the accrediting team. Uh, I won't ask you to cheerlead if you're not so moved. Uh, I won't ask you not to complain if you've got problems. Those are all natural parts of this. But the head of the accreditation team said, you know, I've been through a few budget cuts myself. I know what it's like. As long as you're open, transparent, you have a good process, and there's communication, you guys will do just fine. I think we've had that. I think we've had that over the past few years. I think we've got a strategic plan that's changing us. I think we've put resources where the plan is. I think we've got a number of wonderful, measurable things to show that we're making great progress as a fine research institution due to you. So with that, I'll say, I hope you remember there's an accreditation visit. I hope that you come to the open houses and that, uh, that will be held. And I hope we have a healthy dialogue that lets us remember why we're here and lets us learn and lets us build strength and move forward in a positive fashion. Because that is the most valuable outcome of an accreditation visit. Now with that, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Michael Bowers, who can talk to you a little bit more about the nuts and bolts. But I really thank you all for coming today and appreciate uh, everything you do as the year winds down. Thank you. Thank you, President Smotrisk. Um, I just want to re reiterate what the President has said, first of all, because it is very easy in the short term for us to look at all the budget cuts that we're, that we're taking and, and, and the faculty lines that are open and the staff lines that are open and to feel depressed. But I, along with many of you in this room, uh, was here in 2000 when we had that accreditation visit. And I think anyone who was there will tell you that in those 10 years, UNLV has come a long way. We've made incredible faculty hires, we've made incredible staff hires, we've raised the bar for, our, uh, for admitting students at UNLV, our IT infrastructure, our library information structure, everything is, is really so much better. <laughs> 2.1 million square feet that we have added in 10 years. Plus uh, all the buildings, of course, the Greenspun building, uh, the new library, and, and so on. Um, any of us who were here 10 years ago knows that we have come a long way in 10 years. And accreditation is really about that long view, not just simply about maybe what's been going on in the last few months and the budget cuts and so on. So again, let me, let me emphasize, as the President has, again, I'm not going to tell anybody what to say to the accrediting team. You're going to say what you're going to say. But I just hope that everyone will take into account where we have come in 10 years and not simply uh, short-term problems that we, that we may be facing right now. In terms of nuts and bolts, as the President has said, let me just tell you a little bit about where uh, we are right now in terms of the in terms of the accreditation a self-study uh, report has been written over the last couple of years Gail and Muhammad whom you met just earlier uh, were the uh, were the team leaders of that uh, of that uh, group and have done an absolutely outstanding job pulling everything together uh, the report itself which is about 300 pages a very good report and then thousands and thousands of, uh, of supporting documents I know a number of you in this room have been involved with that as well either as members of the steering committee uh, or as individuals who have provided information for those for those reports and we thank you very much for that that report went to the accrediting team uh, in early March they will now have had an opportunity to read that. They will be arriving in Las Vegas this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, uh, and we will begin uh, the, uh, the site team visit very early on, uh, on Monday morning. 
On Monday, there will be three open meetings, and I would very much like to encourage all of you to attend those. They have been posted on UNLV official Monday and on Wednesday today, and again on Friday, we're going to post them. There's a meeting for faculty, a meeting for staff, a meeting for students, and we'd very much like for uh, everyone to show up for those. Even if you don't particularly have anything to say to the team, it would be nice to have lots of bodies in the room so that they get the impression that we really do care uh, that they are here and that we are going uh, through this through this process. There will then be an exit meeting in the Student Union uh, Theater on Wednesday at 11. Again, I would encourage you to come to that meeting as well. That will be the meeting at which the accreditation team leader will go over the recommendations uh, and the commendations that they have uh, based on their site visit. We hope that there will be lots of commendations and not very many recommendations. Let me be very clear. No one thinks that UNLV is going to lose its accreditation. That's, that's not really what's at issue here. I, we're not concerned about that. But we are concerned about getting the best uh, site visit and, and commendations that we can get because for every one of those recommendations, uh, we as an institution are going to have to follow up with additional reports, additional uh, paper, additional supporting documents, and perhaps even additional site visits. So for the sake of all of us in this room, all of us at UNLV, I think we want to have as few of those as we possibly can. And one way to do that certainly is to make the team feel as welcome as we possibly can. The president has already said, be nice. Uh, and I, I know that everyone is going to do that anyway. That, that's not a concern. But, but uh, certainly if you would uh, be as responsive as possible to the needs. Each one of these site uh, visitors will have a liaison. Some of you in this room may have, uh, have been assigned that. Uh, and those liaisons will make sure that they get where they need to be, when they need to be there, and also to ensure that they have uh, whatever they may need and meet whomever they need to meet. So it's going to be a fairly intense two and a half days for them. Uh, they will be meeting with many of you in this room. Uh, and, uh, and again, we are, we are hopeful for, uh, for a positive outcome. Uh, and other than that, I know I addressed earlier with the deans and the chairs, uh, the president said, what are they likely going to be interested in? Well, as, as the chief academic officer, obviously, I'm much more interested in that aspect of it. After all, uh, academics is what we do here. There are standards on, uh, on facilities and business practices. There are standards on information uh, systems. There are standards on governance and so on. But the two biggest standards that you will find in the self-study are standard two, which, on the which is on the educational programs, and standard four, which is on faculty. And over half of the uh, 13 visitors who are coming next week, uh, I think seven or eight of them will be looking at standards two and four. So that is where there's going to be a great deal of, uh, of intense uh, observation uh, and investigation in terms of how we, are, uh, how we are meeting our mission. And certainly, as the president has said, one of the main items is going to be assessment. As, as a member of one of these teams in the past, I can tell you that every one of those people is going to be looking at assessment. How are you assessing what you are doing? Are you, in fact, doing what you say you're doing? Are you meeting your mission and your goals? Um, and it's important that we be able to show that we are doing that. And also, just as important, not only that you're doing it, but that you're closing the loop in the sense that you are actually using that data to, to make changes. So I would encourage each of you to think about those, about those issues. So for example, if in your department you have done assessment and you've decided that something's not working and you've changed it, that's the kind of thing that accreditors want to hear. So uh, by all means, uh, I, I would encourage you to, 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 to focus on, on those kinds of things. That is, essentially, are we achieving our mission? The Northwest Commission doesn't care what our mission is. Our mission could be two-year degrees and uh, workforce development. They'd be, they'd be perfectly fine with that. What they care about is, are we meeting the mission that we have established for ourselves? And so by all means, uh, let me suggest that we all focus on that. And with that, I will turn it back to the President and perhaps any questions that people may have. I don't really have a lot more to say. Um, I'm heartened by the group that's here t today. I know that there's a number of incredibly uh, productive and, and 
uh, wonderful faculty and staff and students out in the audience. And I'd say if any of you have any questions about assessment or uh, any specific concerns that you have, love to hear from them now. Uh, love to hear from you now. Uh, Mr. Microphone, we'll hand you a microphone if you have a question. Hands, anyone? Okay. Rather than walk through the room, I'll just wait. I see one back there. Okay. Hey, Neil. Hello? Yeah. Hey, Neil. Um, I actually, my name is Jovan. I just I wanted to address this question to you personally. Um, the governor proposed to have all of the classified state workers here in UNLV and the community colleges move into INCHI employees. I was just wondering your stance and opinion on that matter there. You know, I don't have a strong opinion on it. I know there's a group internally that's been working on it. And what I'd say is I'll back what the... Uh, classified employees here feel is the best move for them. Uh, I think there are some real advantages uh, to moving out of the state system and into ENSHI. I think that there have been a couple concerns raised uh, about uh, whether they can peel that Band-Aid off. Uh, we've, uh, uh, we're, we're having legal counsel uh, work with that group, and right now, I'd say if you feel strongly that this is the right time to move into ENSHI instead of the state classified, uh, and, and that's the consensus of the group that will certainly advance that agenda and work hard to achieve it for you. I wasn't, I wasn't saying that that's uh, what we want to do. I was just, I was just wondering what your, your opinion on it was. And you said that I just wanted to know what those benefits were of moving into Inchi. Richard, do you want to address this? Uh, our legal counsel has been deep in it, and so I think uh, it might be a better, uh, he might give you a better list of the advantages. <clears throat> Come on up, Richard. Call to the head of the class. Well, you know, the, the, the regents, I don't think, have taken a position on that. Uh, there's pluses and minuses. I. I I really wouldn't want to characterize it as better or worse. There would be some advantages probably in terms of availability of grants and aid and other kinds of benefits that might be unique to university employment. On the other hand, the classified system has very strong employment protection and um, appeal rights that probably would be curtailed under an NSHE system. So it would be a balance. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure it would you could characterize one or the other as better or worse. Sorry for the equivocal answer, but like everything else, it isn't always straightforward. <clears throat> Show of hands, other questions? I just had a question um, what the accreditation team might think given that they're concerned about our academic programs, that we do have this proposed list of departments to cut, are they going to have an opinion about protecting the integrity of our academic programs given a vertical cut as opposed to a horizontal cut? Um, I don't think they're going to have an opinion on horizontal versus vertical. They will weigh in on the following. Any students who are currently in programs uh, who have advanced to a, a, an appropriate level should be given a reasonable period of time to graduate from those programs. The accreditors would like to make sure that we'll assure that. And the other part, and, and I had a, a fairly long personal conversation with the head of the accreditation team over this, um, they've seen this happen before. It is a very, very challenging situation for a campus. Uh, what they want to know is, is that we're following our own rules and internal bylaws and that we're doing this in uh, a fair spirit of shared governance, uh, faculty, senate, classified staff, and everyone contributing. And uh, I, I believe that we have uh, gone to great lengths to ensure that this is done in the spirit of shared governance. So I believe that the process will be more evaluated than the actual nature of the cut. Looking for hands. 
If there are no other hands, I want to say uh, sorry to drag you out. I know you're all very, very busy. I really appreciate you coming here today. Let's have a great accreditation visit, and let's show Las Vegas and the state what a wonderful university we have here. Thank you. Thank you.